Today's question is really more of a fundamental AutoCAD training issue. That said, I've had it come up a few times, so I thought I'd go ahead and address it. They're wondering how to go from model space with their designs or the drawings they've done to paper space and then print it out uh, as a PDF file at 8.5 by 11. So let's go ahead and jump over to AutoCAD and I'll show you how this is done. I've opened up an AutoCAD file that has a floor plan and an elevation drawn in model space. These could be drawings of anything. But when you're working in model space, the most important thing is to work at one to one. So if I measure this door here on the floor plan, you'll see that it's a three foot door. I drew it at three feet, that's the actual size. Now I know that I'm in model space, not because of the black background, but because down at the bottom here I can see that it says model, and the model space icon is highlighted. I can switch to paper space by picking on the third icon over, which gives me uh, previews of my different layouts, paper space and model space, and I can switch between those. Now if I right click on my paper space environment called layout 1, I can easily rename that to anything. So we'll go ahead and call this 8.5 by 11 print PDF. Now I want to set this layout of this paper space environment up. So I'll go back to my quick view. I'll right click on the layout I'm working on and hit page setup manager. This is where I go in and adjust all the settings about how this particular paper space environment will print. So I want to set it to the PDF driver. And when printing from paper space, it's always best to use the layout and scale of one to one. The other settings I think are better for model space prints. That said, I'm now going to set my color to monochrome and my orientation to portrait. You can now see that it adjusts my layout or paper space environment to reflect those settings. We're actually seeing the 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper and the dashed line is our printable area. At this point, you would probably insert some sort of title block onto the sheet, but I don't have one, so I'm just going to draw one. I'll put in a rectangle that's maybe uh, 8 inches by 10 and a half inches. You'll notice that now that I'm in paper space, I'm still working at one-to-one, -one, but I'm working at one-to-one -one in consideration of the piece of paper. So it's an 8 and a half by 11 piece of paper. Those are the kind of dimensions I'll be working with here in a paper space environment. And with that, I'll use the magic of recorded content to go ahead and speed up my drafting. I'll add another line, an inch up, we'll make it thicker. And then I want to put some sort of text down at the bottom to make it look like a title block. Keep in mind as I'm working that this stuff is again one-to-one. -one. So my text is going to be half inch height font because that's what I want it to print out at. And with that, my title block's done. The next thing I need to do is create a viewport for my drawing to come into, just like the box we deleted earlier. I can do this from the view tab of the ribbon and there's a couple different types of viewports, rectangular, polygonal. I'm just going to place a couple rectangular viewports, maybe one at the top of my page for the elevation and a larger one below that for the floor plan. You'll notice as I place these viewports that all the graphics in model space are brought in and fit to that particular window. Now the viewports will print out and I can go into my quick view layout settings and I can do a print preview to show you that and then you know at any time as you make changes you can check your print preview and see exactly what this is going to look like. The print preview is WYSIWYG so what you see is what you get is the idea. So if I printed right now this is exactly what I would get. Well it's not what I want so let's go ahead and exit the print preview and we'll cancel out of the plot dialog box and then from here I want to put these uh, viewports on a no plot layer. You can use def points. People have used it for years. I don't suggest it. I think it's a better idea to create a new layer specifically for content that doesn't plot. So following AIA naming standards, I'll go with A Anno No Plot and I'll turn off the plot property for that particular layer. Now of course I can select those viewports um, using properties, hit the layer drop down and change it to the No Plot layer. Keep in mind, you'll still see the graphics, but they won't plot. So I'll go ahead and go back into my layout settings, print, preview, and now you can see I don't get those boxes around the model space geometry. All right, let's close out of there, and the next thing we want to do is actually scale the graphics within our viewports. You can easily just double click inside a viewport to activate it. You can see it's bold now, and if I zoom in and out with my mouse, 
I can easily uh, change the way things are displayed. Now keep in mind I'm working with the actual model space graphic. So if I delete geometry or make modifications, I'll see those in model space and I'll see those modifications in all viewports. But I can zoom each viewport to show different pieces of information. So I can just pan and zoom to the location in model space that I want to display. At this point I've done it visually. There's no exact scale set. So if I print this out, those are just going to be at a custom scale. But I can easily select the viewport, go to properties, and there's a standard scale drop down, which allows me to say I want this view to show graphics at 3.30 seconds equals a foot, or quarter inch equals a foot, whatever scale you want. And you can see as I adjust that how it gives me more or less of this particular floor plan and elevation. So this floor plan is a little big for an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. So let's go ahead and take this particular viewport, I'll select it, and I'll set my scale to quarter inch equals a foot. Let's say this is an addendum, and we want to pan over to the area of interest, and then from paper space we can draw on additional notes and annotation for this addendum. But now you can see I have one area at one scale, another area at a different scale, and we can peek at our print preview and see the results that we're going to get. So that looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead and plot this as a PDF file now. All I have to do when I plot is pick a location and a name. All the other settings are controlled by the page layout that's assigned to the paper space environment. So if you set up your page layouts and you, you know, follow the settings I've gone through, it's really easy to create these PDFs. So now I have the PDF open inside Acrobat Reader. One last thing I want to mention is that the PDF driver you use to create these could be the one that comes with the software or there are many different ones out there. So if you're getting mixed results, you might try some different PDF drivers. And that concludes this short demonstration on how to use model space and paper space and generate a PDF of your files. Thank you so much for watching.